Hi, I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation, and welcome to The Hive. In this video in the Getting Started series, we'll take a look at how to set up Home Assistant to be accessible via the internet. We'll also be adding SSL certificate security, and we're going to also enable multi-factor authentication for some added security. In a previous video, I showed you how to set up Home Assistant Cloud, which takes care of this for us. So if you're okay with the spending of five US dollars a month, that's probably the better video for you to take a look at. Unlike that episode, we're going to be exposing our Home Assistant server to the internet. And there's a bunch of considerations to take, be taken into account here. Firstly, you're unlikely to have a DNS name or static IP from your ISP. If you are lucky enough to have a static IP or DNS name, that makes things slightly easier, but you do still need that DNS name. Thankfully, there's some add-ons in the add-on store that will help us out. We'll also benefit from adding an SSL certificate so our communications are not sent back and forth in plain text. If you're ready to expose your home assistant to the internet, strap in and let's get started. First, we've logged into Home Assistant and we'll head over to the supervisor and to the add-on store. The add-on that we need is Duck DNS, and it's right here on the front page, right in the official add-on section. So we will click on Duck DNS and then click on install. Duck DNS is a free dynamic DNS service and dynamic DNS just means that your static IP when it updates from your ISP this plugin will talk to the duck DNS servers and update the route to your host okay so that has started up I'm going to turn on watchdog and I'm going to turn on auto update and I'm going to pop over to the configuration tab here now the first section of the configuration tab has some information on let's encrypt and Let's Encrypt takes care of those SSL certificates that I spoke about before. I'm going to change the accept terms to true in here and the domains, I'm going to need to create a domain. Now I haven't created a domain with DuckDNS yet, so I need to do that. And I'm gonna go over to duckdns.org. Now I need to sign in with one of these types of accounts and I'm going to use my GitHub if you used GitHub to sign up when we were looking at the hacks integration, you can do the same thing here as well. Okay, so now we've signed into GitHub and we are going to authorize DuckDNS. So authorize, and now we need to decide on a domain. So I'm going to choose a domain here and going to be http our domain dot duckdns.org and we're going to add that domain success added to our account so now i'm going to pop back over to our supervisor and i'm going to add that domain into the configuration file so i also need to grab the token so i'll pop back over to duckdns and i need to grab this token here i'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste that into here. I'm going to save that, and then I'm going to go back to info, and I'm going to try to start DuckDNS. So on the configuration file here for DuckDNS, we also need to make sure that we are putting in duckdns.org at the end of our domain, and we'll hit save on that. So back on the documentation, I wanna take a look at this snippet here. I'm going to copy this code snippet. I'm going to pop back over to my configuration.yaml file and somewhere near the top, I'm going to insert this stuff. And all this is doing is it's telling the Home Assistant core application about the SSL certificates that we've now created using the Let's Encrypt that is built into the duck DNS integration here. So now that we've made those changes, I'm just gonna restart this and it should create the 
let's encrypt the certificates and we're going to go back to the configuration. We're going to go back to general, pardon me. We're going to go to server controls because we've modified our YAML again. We're going to click check configuration. We want check configuration comes back with configuration valid. We're going to click restart. Lastly, we're also going to configure multi-factor authentication to add an extra layer of security to our system. Before we start, you will need to have some kind of authenticator app to set this up, such as Google Authenticator or Twilio Authy. I've actually also ordered myself a couple of YubiKeys and I'll be trying to set that up with Home Assistant and I'll do a video on YubiKeys when they arrive. What we're going to do to set up two-factor authentication is click on our name in the bottom left corner. We're going to scroll down to multi-factor authentication modules. And we're going to click enable next to this TOTP thing here. Now we need to use our authenticator app to scan this QR code. And so I will open up Authy. So I've opened up Authy, I'm clicked add account and I'm going to click scan QR code and we will give it access to my QR code camera and I'm just going to scan this QR code and it's going to add the account and we will click save on that and what we need to do back in Home Assistant is type in a one of these tokens so and we'll click submit. So setup is now done for Authenticator. So now that we've done that, what I can do is I can click log out and we'll log out. And now if I try to log in as find and, and then next, it's going to ask me for a two-factor authentication code. So I'm going to put in that two-factor authentication code. Great. So we've added that additional layer of security to our Home Assistant. Now that doesn't complete the setup. We still need to make some changes on our router to do port forwarding of port 8123 on our Raspberry Pi and pass that through to the internet. Now I'm not gonna show you how to do that part because every router brand and model has a different method to set up port forwarding. For my case, I'm using Ubiquiti Edge Router X and I'll also need to configure my setup slightly differently from what you'll need to do because I already have my production server port forwarded to port 8123. So I'm going to do that off camera and we'll be back in a second and check our port forwarding. Okay, so now I've made those changes to my port forwarding and I'm going to try and connect to http colon slash slash and then my duck dns so duckdns.org colon and in my case I'm connecting to 8124 and we are presented with our login so I'm going to log in using that and then my password and I need my two-factor authentication code. So, and there we have it, we are set up. So now what we can do is type in HTTPS colon slash slash, and then our DuckDNS address and port 8124 in my case, and it should, Okay, so I figured out what was going on there. I needed to add this row here, the base URL, which then had my HTTPS and then my DuckDNS details and then the port of 8124 in my case. So I'm just going to try signing in again, make sure that this all works still. And then my two-factor authentication code and there we have it, we are logged in. So that's it. We've set up dynamic DNS, HTTPS encryption, and even multi-factor authentication so we can access our Home Assistant interface no matter where in the world we're at. You can add this duck DNS URL to your mobile apps so you can turn the aircon on and off while you're away from home, turn on the lights if you're coming home late, torment the cat, or just annoy your partner. 
I hope this video has helped you in your home automation journey. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family who are also into home automation, and don't forget to subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. If you did just hit that subscribe button, I'd recommend hitting the bell notification icon and YouTube is gonna send you a notification when I release new videos. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.